and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. And I'm Sean Carruthers. Now you're Sean Carruthers. Sean Carruthers. <laughs> and today on the show, uh, we are going to teach you how to uh, take a new PC that you recently bought and prep it for everyday life. You know, yes. You buy a new computer. Or maybe you didn't buy it. Maybe you got it maybe for a you gift. Got it as a gift, exactly. So we're going to show you all the key things that you have to do to the machine to kind of get it up and running and get it useful and that sort of thing. So. That's what we're going to do today. Sounds good to me. Fine, huh? Uh, and is there anything else that we have to mention before we, because I know we're in our new studio. We are at butterscotch.com now and all of those fun things. And you have a new haircut. I, I have the same haircut. Oh, okay. All right. Got a little bit of gray in the beard from working with you. I know, I know. I know. Uh, I, one thing I do want to mention, you've got a dinosaur growing out of your head. Do I? You oh, do. Oh, yay, I do. Uh, you I got two, a couple of them growing dinosaurs. out of your head. Do you like our new set? It's awesome. I like it. All right. All right, well, let's take a break. And when we come back, I'm going to show you what you need to do to get your new PC up and running after this. Well, if you're lucky enough to get a brand new computer, it's always a wise thing to do some fundamental, well, I guess it's not even utility cleanup type things, it's just some steps to prep it. Yeah, there's, there's a few things that you need that aren't going to be there. There's a few things that are there that you don't need want. and don't want. Right. Uh, there's some choices that were made by the manufacturers that are maybe a little bit un savory. unwanted, unsavory, unwanted, yeah. annoying, you know, things like that. Yeah. Good. So we're going to show you how to fix those. Right. So you undo all the paper. There's your new PC. It's right here. It's right there. So right. what would you say is the first thing, besides turning it on, that you should do once you get it? Well, you can uh, get the fingerprints off of it. This is the Dell Studio Hybrid, by the way. Very nice Very little nice box. PC, yeah. The first thing you got to do, especially with the Windows machine, is make sure that it meets security uh, specifications. You mm -hmm. want to secure this thing because there's bad guys out there that are going to try to get into your machine. Right, exactly. Almost immediately, right? Yeah. So you want to lock down, lock down your computer from all the bad guys. Windows locked down, my XP and Vista guide to hacks, attacks, and other intimate mayhem. I wrote the book on it. You know, Matt, uh, our producer, and I had a bet going on this. He bet that you would pimp the book. I didn't think that you'd be that shameless. No, so uh, Matt, you get five bucks. <laughs> okay. So you need an antivirus, anti-spyware product, and a firewall. Yes. So most people, especially people that aren't particularly savvy with computers, are going to go out and buy an internet security suite. And probably not a, that's such a bad idea. No. For, right? for the vast majority of users, it's an OK solution. Right. So uh, right here on my machine, right here, right now, I have a copy of Norton Antivirus, the latest, the latest product. And so Norton, of course, over the years, is, is become the number one security suite um, you know, in, um, in the world, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we haven't always recommended Norton. No, Norton for the longest time became very slow. It was bloatware, it made your system crawl. So you, you know, can get spyware in your system, and that'll slow your system down. But sometimes the cure was worse than the disease. Sure. Norton would just suck up all your resources all the time. That's right, exactly. So, you know, we haven't always recommended uh, Norton specifically, yeah. but these days, Norton 2009, if you have an opportunity to try that out, it's actually not a bad little solution, especially if, uh, you know, you're not particularly confident about installing software and mm -hmm. doing all the security features, because yeah. Norton Internet Security 2009 comes with antivirus, mm -hmm. anti-spyware, uh, a firewall, and a whole bunch of other things that will tweak your system so that it's locked yeah. down. And with a much lighter touch now, they recognize this and said, hey guys, we're sorry, we, right. we're, we're going to scale that back. That's right. Now, if you don't want to spend the money on a product like that, you know, McAfee, of course, will make a suite as well. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to spend the money, then uh, you might want to pick up a, a download a free copy of AVG. It's a product made by a company called Greesoft, um, G-R-I-S-O-F-T, and it's available at free.avg.com. I actually have it on the screen here, their website. You download it, you install it. It's an antivirus product. Mm -hmm. They also have an anti-spyware product, so you have to install that separately as yeah, well. Yeah, just make sure you get them all. Now, now, some of these machines, when you get them out of the box, they may have security pre-installed, but mm -hmm. you have to be a little bit wary of that in some cases. 
Yeah, well, so I mean, very often what you'll see is you'll see uh, Norton um, or, or one of the products you know, pre-installed. It's on a 30-day mm -hmm. trial, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and so you have to activate it first before mm -hmm. uh, you actually can use it. Yeah, you may think that you're secure, but 30 days later, it may just stop working and not necessarily tell you that it's not really doing its job anymore. So that's right. So be wary of that. Now, uh, so antivirus. Anti-spyware, you can uh, certainly comes with the suite. You can get a freebie, right? Mm -hmm. Windows Defender is built into Windows Vista. Yeah. It can be downloaded from Microsoft.com slash Defender for XP if you have a legal license of XP. Mm -hmm. um, or you can get a copy of a product that we really like a lot called SpyBot Search and Destroy. And I have a copy of that installed right here. I can show mm -hmm. you real quick. Uh, a free product, you can download it from safer-networking.net. Mm -hmm. uh, worth installing. Has some conflicts with some of the other anti-spyware products, but certainly worth a download and you know, try it out. Okay. That's the thing is, yeah, with spyware, we've we've talked in the past. You probably want more than one spyware application because spyware uh, is in the eye of the beholder in some cases. Some adware is considered safe by some uh, particular applications. Some of it is considered, uh, you know, not so safe by others. So it might be worth it to to have multiple things just to catch everything. Not not one program will catch every single malware application out there. So very good. Okay, good. The other thing you're going to want to do, and, and I think this is probably worthy of, uh, of mention, is as soon as you get your machine up and running, you should connect to the internet yes. and run uh, Windows Update. Yes. Now, Windows Update, of course, is the built-in utility in Windows XP and Windows Vista that allows you to download all of the you know, fixes, for example, uh, for the operating system, some updates and things like that. Now, to get to that, you're going to go to your Start button down here. Uh, in Windows Vista, you're going to type Windows Update. As you can see right here, in XP, you're going to go all programs and look for the Windows Update at the top of the menu. So I'm going to click on that now. And I'll show you, because actually I have two, a couple of um, updates that are already built in, that they're already alerting me. I haven't done it on this particular machine. So what I'm going to do here is check for updates. It's going to run the routine. It has to be connected to the internet, of course. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it will find what has to be downloaded. And then what you're going to do is install those things before you do anything else. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, is that uh, Microsoft uh, automatically updates these things in a lot of cases. Every time there's a security breach, they'll release a patch you know, on, a, on a regular basis. But that computer that you just got may have been sitting in a warehouse for the last four months, and there may be four months worth of bad guys out there that uh, your computer's not protected against. So definitely do that as well. OK, good. All right, so moving on from security, once you have that locked down, uh, lockdown. Hmm. Um, you're going to want to, probably for everyday use, you're going to want a copy of Microsoft Office or a, an Office type of suite. Mm -hmm. Now, once upon a time, you know, your options were Microsoft Office from, from, uh, you know, from Microsoft, of course. Uh, WordPerfect, there was a WordPerfect suite from Corel Corporation. They own that right now. Um, most people are going to want the Microsoft Office product. Now, there is a, a freeware Office suite called OpenOffice, and that's available for free. There are some functionality issues in terms of you know, opening mm -hmm. some documents with that freebie. Yeah. But if you want a freebie mm -hmm. and you don't want to pay the $300 mm -hmm. right, or the $500 for the full-on office suite, then you might want to consider that. Yeah. And just a reminder, if you're a student as well, you can always go get a student uh, discounted price on a lot of these uh, software suites as well. So if you uh, have a university uh, store that sells computer stuff, check it out. It might be a whole lot cheaper for you there with your student card. OK, very good. All right. So you have, uh, now you have the basics. Now you can run your, your computer. Now there is, of course, you've been adding stuff. Mm -hmm. Now it's a good idea to remove some stuff. Yeah, because as we said, the manufacturers may install a whole pile of stuff on there that you don't want. Right. And it's worth noting, just on that topic, we talked about Office as well. You may come with a version of Office on here, technically, and you want to check to make sure that that is a full-on version. It's not just trialware, because right. that, that comes a lot of times, too. So you might think you have it double-checked to make sure it's an actual full-on operating version, too. Right. Now, what happens is, of course, because those margins are so low on uh, software, the, on, on hardware these days, what a lot of manufacturers do, like Dell and HP and other companies, mm -hmm. they will install uh, trial versions on your computer, all kinds of stuff. So once upon a time, it was AOL. Mm -hmm. uh, these days, you're seeing you know, movie players. And uh, uh, as you mentioned before, Microsoft Office comes in a demo. The security mm -hmm. software comes in a demo and that sort of thing. Now, you may not want all that stuff on your system. So there's a very handy utility Mm -hmm. that I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to say because it's a bit rude. Oh, go ahead. You know you want to, and we always come back to this topic either way. Okay. So the product's called uh, PC Decrapifier. De what a fire? Decrapifier. All right. I know. I'm not supposed to say that out loud. It was supposed to be, you know, child-friendly on this show. But it's not a bad word because it's actually built into 
the term. But it mm -hmm. is. It's, it's like icky stuff on your system, right? Mm -hmm. All the icky stuff on your system. You want to remove it. And mm -hmm. this is a great product because what it does is it goes through all the programs on your system and gives you an easy way to remove them. All that trial wear, all that crap wear, as mm -hmm. they call it. Oh, I even feel guilty saying it. <laughs> this is a newer, more sensitive Andy. I know, aren't I? It's the new age Andy. So let me just run that. So you're going to download that from twocows.com. We'll put the mm -hmm. URL up on the screen here. Yeah, uh, or go to uh, the show notes to get it, of course. Of course, Two Cows is uh, the company that owns us. has this huge file library worth uh, checking out. There you go. Thank you for the plug. There you go. Okay. Or the show notes on butterscotch.com, which is another plug. There we go. Okay. PC load, load the program. PC Decrapifier. <laughs> I'm going to run it here. When you download it, you don't install it. You just run it. Okay. okay. So I'm going to... Um, do that right now. And basically, it's a step-by-step -step process you're going to walk through. So let me just do that right here. So obviously, the first screen says check for updates. You may want to check to see if there's a new version of it, but I'm not going to do that right now. Click Next. There's a license. Say yes, assuming you agree. And, uh, and then I'm going to keep going until it's going to say, is this a new PC? So this could be used, for example, on a brand new PC or on a PC that uh, has been around a while and you just want to check to see if there's any trial that you want to remove. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to click Next there. And now this is a, an interesting thing. There's a, an option called restore point, right? Mm -hmm. You can create a restore point. And that's a Windows feature that uh, allows you to create sort of, you know, um, it's almost like a bookmark of how your system is right now, mm -hmm. right? So that if something goes wrong during the uninstall of the trialware, of the crapware. If, if you decrapify the wrong crap. If you decrapify the wrong crap, you can roll the system back yeah. so that, uh, you know, so that you can recover it. So I would highly recommend you click on re uh, create restore mm -hmm. point. Click Next. Now, this is going to show you all the systems, all the stuff it has found on my system that it thinks is trialware. Yeah. So as you can see here, it says QuickTime. So it's found QuickTime, which is not necessarily crap. No, you might want that. You might want that. And Microsoft Home, off, Home and Student 2007. So that was a copy of Microsoft Office that came as a demo on this system. Right. right? So I could check mark these. So you have the choice of which ones you keep or, or get rid of. Or get rid of, yeah. In this particular case, I'm not going to take them off. But so you can select all or none. I'm going to say next. Now, here's the use, a very useful feature coming up. So it now will list all the other programs that you could manually remove. Mm -hmm. So I have all kinds of trialware on here that I've installed for previous mm -hmm. lab rats and that sort of thing. Uh, some key pieces uh, for Adobe. There's Adobe Flash mm -hmm. plugin. I don't want to yeah. uninstall that. So be very, very careful when you use this. Be very selective about what you use. And you may want to remove one thing at a time, for example, as opposed to yeah. selecting everything. Now, you could remove these things by going into your control panel, going into the add remove programs as well. And you could do that manually one by one yourself. But this gives you a nice control panel for getting rid of all of them. It does. It, it's smart. it identifies things you know, smartly, right? And uh, will actually say, you know, th these things are optional. And you may want to remove them as opposed mm -hmm. to you going, hmm, what's in my add remove programs utility, right? Yeah. Now, one last tip, I think. You know, before we wrap this one, we uh, have taken the computer out of the box. You might be tempted to just throw all of that box and packaging away. I would keep the packaging for a little bit. Uh, and most importantly, keep your warranty card, uh, and fill it out, send it away as soon as you can. Yeah. And uh, keep your manual, by all means. Keep your manual in a safe place so that you can always come back to that. Keep all of your documentation mm -hmm. in one handy place. And one final tip, you're going to get a disk, right? You'll mm -hmm. get a disk with all of the trialware that you may want to install later on, uh, including software uh, that plays movies back. And in some cases, those have what's called codecs mm -hmm. on it, which allow you to play back DVDs and things like that. So mm -hmm. you want to keep that around in case you remove that by accident. Right? Yeah. And if you get a disk that also has a restore for the computer, keep that safe, too, because you might too. need that in case anything goes really wrong. Right, there you go. OK, very good. All right, well, let's take a break. And uh, when we come back, we've got, uh, I guess, missed downloads here? Or maybe not. We'll find out. We'll find out. OK. That's after this. So we have some uh, very sad news and some very exciting news. And actually, it's both kind of exciting news. So Miss Download exciting. is no longer embedded into Lab Rats. She's graduated. She's graduated to her own show. She's actually the most popular show right now, besides Lab Rats, mm -hmm. on the Butterscotch.com network. Mm -hmm. And so we're spinning her off into her own show. So if you want to continue to see all the fantastic freeware and all the programs that she offers, then uh, go to Butterscotch.com and download uh, her show from Miss mm -hmm. Download. You can see a link right there. Now. Mm -hmm. Instead of misdownload, we're going to keep introducing new shows here on Lab Rats. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is that we have a new guy. His name's Jay Goldman, and he's doing a new Hello, show. Jay. He's an awesome guy. And uh, 
he's going to do a new show called Mr. Mobile. Mr. Miss Download. Miss, I'm sensing a theme here. It's pretty good, huh? I know. Mm. It's a bit of a riff on that. Anyway, so uh, check out Jay. He's uh, going to do a weekly show with us, and uh, we're going to stick it in here in Lab Rats just to introduce him. And it's all about smartphones and how, how can you can use your mobile technology effectively. So let's take a look at Jay and the first episode of Mr. Mobile. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jay Goldman and you're watching Mr. Mobile. Today we're going to take a look at an iPhone app called FizzWeather, which gives you the latest weather conditions and forecasts right on your phone. Now, some of you might be asking, why do I need to know what the weather is on my phone when I could just look out the window? Well, sometimes you're in a room that has no windows, and when you're in that room, you're going to be very thankful to have FizzWeather. There are a lot of different weather applications on the iPhone, and I've looked at most of them. I can say that FizzWeather is definitely my favorite, mostly because the graphics look really great on the phone, and the performance of the application is really excellent in terms of being able to add and customize different things. So let's take a look. I'm going to tap on the icon and bring up the application. And right away, you'll see that the forecast for wherever I happen to be comes up on the phone. Now, in this case, I happen to be in Toronto, where the weather kind of stinks right now. So we're getting some snow, and it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside. If I want to see what the weather is in Toronto and Celsius, because in Canada the metric system is used, and in most of the rest of the world, I can tap on the eye down here, jump into the settings area of the application, and I've got control over all of the different measurement units that are used. So I'm going to go into temperature, switch that over to using degrees centigrade, and jump back out. While I'm within this area of the application, I can also add other cities. Now, because the weather sucks outside and I'm in Toronto, I'm going to add Hawaii, where the weather definitely doesn't suck, just so that I can feel even worse about the temperature right now. Tapping on the plus sign gives me a little keyboard entry here, and I can look up a city or location just by typing it out on the keyboard. So I'm going to type in Hawaii. My iPhone recognizes it for me, so I don't have to type the whole thing. I'm going to hit the search button, and this will contact FizzWeather servers, look for locations that match whatever term I've entered, and bring those locations up so that I can just tap on one to look up the weather there. In this case, I'm going to use the Kona Hawaii Island lookup, and I can reorder these by grabbing on the little horizontal line icon and dragging them up and down. So I'm going to put Hawaii first. Tapping on done takes me back out to the weather screen. In this case, FizzWeather is going to go out and load the weather for Hawaii for me because it hadn't done that before. And so we can see that it's actually 18 degrees Celsius and sunny in Hawaii, clearly much better than where I am. It's also done something neat for me here. There's a little advisory icon in the top corner. And when I tap on that, I can actually see that there's a surf condition advisory for Hawaii right now, which makes me wish I had a surfboard and was out there surfing. Tapping on the advisory icon again closes it and gives me an opportunity to go through the different screens that I've got access to in FizzWeather. So right now we're looking at the five-day forecast. I can also jump into a two-day forecast, which gives me a little bit more detail, next 24 hours and the 24 to 48 hour period. I can tap on the now and get a look at what the conditions are right now. And that's actually based on the different airports that are, or weather stations that are reporting conditions for this area. So we can see that for Hawaii, it's actually not picking something up, but I can jump to the next city, which is Toronto, and then we can see what the now conditions are. I can also take a look at the maps, and they've got some great maps in here. If you're a weather junkie like I am, you'll really appreciate the ability to take a look at things like the forecast satellite radar maps, and actually a Google map as well. And I can also jump into the airport section, and I can see what the weather conditions are affecting travel through the airport. So right now, for example, the application is telling me that there is a delay of 30 to 45 minutes Friday afternoon at the Toronto airport. That's the Fizz Weather application. Hope you enjoyed your look at it. Again, available in the App Store, $5.99. Highly recommend it. I'm Jay Goldman. Thanks for watching Mr. Moba. And we're back. And we have your favorite section of all. I have a new picture time dance. Do you? Picture time. There's, there's a bunch of sharp corners now on our new set. You might yeah, hurt yourself dancing like that. Be very careful. I know. Are you ready for some pictures? I am ready for some pictures. Let's do there it. we go. So, first up, we have our viewer Chris. A dusty who, router. Who is apparently a router. Anyways, I'm, I'm not exactly sure why uh, Chris sent us a picture of his router, but I'm assuming this is his router. Looks like a nice little uh, Linksys model. Linksys, brand new Linksys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, there Thank you go. You. Thank you for that, Chris. And we also have a photograph of a cat. And uh, again, worth pointing out here, we've asked people in the past, make sure when you send pictures, you send higher resolution pictures, because this one's a little bit blurry here. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, from our viewer, Stephen, and it is his cat, Belle. Very nice. And it looks like Belle is in a little crib okay. of some sort. 
So there you, you can go. send your pictures to Don't Put Your Cat in a Crib. Make it wear a bib at labrass.tv. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> or I'm just I'm just reaching here. Being back at labrass.tv. Right. There you go. So don't forget to send your pictures in to us. We uh, love to see your pictures. You can also check out the show notes for this show and all the shows that we do on butterscotch.com. Yeah. And I think that about wraps it up. If you've got a question for us to answer in our mailbag episode, send it to the same address too, by the way. Feedback at labrass.tv. Very good. All right. Well, thanks for downloading us today, for pushing play on your player. I'm Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. We love you, and we'll see you next time. Has this been decrapified? Are you ready? Great stuff, I'm Amber. having trouble with which camera. Like, should I always go to the camera? I should always do that? So I'm finding that I'm not even looking at this camera, though. That's the problem. Um, look, look at that camera off the top. Yeah. And, uh, but every time, because you're going like, blah, 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 blah. If you're going to do that kind of reference to the audience, always do that. Because mm -hmm. basically, think, keep in, in mind while I'm editing with you, if you're talking to Sean, I'm going to be mm -hmm. on a close-up of you. Mm -hmm. And then if all of a sudden you look over there, that means I'm going to have to cut to that camera. And then if you look back to Sean, then I have to cut back to here. Mm. If, if you use that as your reference to mm. keep the audience mm. engaged with what you're saying, okay. so blah, blah, blah. So I should only go to main camera off the top. And at the end. And at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I guess coming out of commercial too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. And the top and tail of every segment. Right. Right.